Hello, Didier Stevens here, senior handler at the Internet Storm Center. In this video, I'm going to show you some tricks on how to reverse an un unknown binary uh, network protocol uh, using one of my tools, uh, a custom Lua dissector for uh, Wireshark. So I created a PCAP file. Uh, I was working with uh, a friend on reversing an uh, network protocol used to update uh, and the firmware of an IoT device. And uh, that work is still ongoing. I cannot share that uh, capture file, but I recreated a, a similar looking uh, capture file. And that's what we are going to look at here. So I open this with Wireshark. And so we have here the, the source. This is my computer and the local host, 127.0.0.1, and the IoT, the simulated IoT device is 127.0.0.2. It's uh, TCP, and the port the IoT device is listening on, so the network server, that port is uh, 50,500. So, I also removed everything that is not related to this uh, IoT network traffic out of this PCAP file, so you just have a single TCP connection here. And we can follow this, so follow TCP stream. And now here we have raw data, let's switch to hex dump. So here in pink, you see the data going from the client, my laptop, to the server, the IoT device. So a lot of data, as you can see here, while in blue, you see what is coming back from the server, the IoT device, which is not a lot. It looks like binary data. It's normal that we have a lot of data going to the IoT device because this simulates a uh, firmware update. We can have a look at single directions. Here, things coming from the server, as you can see, not a lot. There is some structure to it. Here it looks like binary data, but there is some structure to it. We see some patterns. While here, things going to the server from the client, we, we see less patterns. There are some short uh, packets here, but most of them are long. I can also do a row view here and then we we just see the the data uh, without a hex dump and an ascii dump and a position like here here just the raw bytes in hexadecimal representation so we're going to pass this we are going to look at what these individual bytes might meet try to reverse engineer this and for this i'm going to use my um Lua dissector for uh, fixed uh, length fields. So I'm going to assume that this is a binary protocol and that these fields have some fixed uh, length. So how do I use this Lua dissector? Let me close down Wireshark first here. So this Lua dissector FL, eh, fixed length dissector, here, this is the code. You, one way to load this dissector into Wireshark is to start Wireshark from the command line and provide some options to have the dissector loaded. So option uppercase X allows you to provide Lua script arguments options and Lua script here colon that allows you to specify the name of the Lua script that needs to be loaded, like this. And then you provide the capture file. But we are going to provide one important argument, and that is a dissector like this needs to know which port, which TCP port it needs to look at and dissect the data for. So that is also an argument, uppercase X, Lua script underscore script, but now I need to type a 1, because this is an argument for the first script, the first Lua script. You can load more than one script. If I would have 
loaded here a second script, then I would have to type Lua underscore script 2 to provide arguments for that second script. Here there's only one script, so it's Lua script 1. And I need to provide the port, and the port is 50,500. In the Lua code, you might have spotted that when I just showed it, the hard-coded port is 1234. Uh, but that's not what we need here, we need another one. So I provide this as an argument. And then I can run Wireshark. And as you can see here, when I select, for example, this packet with data, uh, then 2, I can now see appearing here FL dissector protocol data. So this is my dissector at work. And if I uh, expand the fields here, you can see there is field 1 and field 2. Let's go to a longer one, this one here, more data. And then you see again field 1, field 2, and here a lot of XML data. By default, the protocol dissector will use, define a field of length 1, so exactly one byte, that is field 1. And then the remaining bytes, if any, are put into field 2. So that is the default and that is something we can change. I'm going to show you that, but before we do that, I'm going to change this name of FL Dissector. That is something you can also do with an argument. So the method I use is to close Wireshark and then to start it again here, but with an extra argument. X Lua script one protocol name and I'm going to call this firmware like this and now if I select one now you can see now firmware okay so if you have here this dissection of uh, the Lua dissector and eh, firmware protocol data you can right click this say protocol preferences and say open firmware protocol preferences and here you have one preference you can uh, change and that is the field length so by default it's one as i explained now if you remember we saw fields we saw data with two to four bytes coming from the server and also uh, going from the client, but then we also had more data. So I'm going to start with four fields of just length one. So each field is one byte. So at most we will have four fields, each one byte, and then a fifth field that contains the remaining data. And then we are going to see if we can find some patterns in there and then deduce from that how this protocol uh, was designed. So this is something you can do with uh, the preferences. You don't have to reload Wireshark for this. So here now we see field 1, field 2. If I select another one, see field 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and so on. Now, the advantage, one of the advantages of having a dissector like this is that you can start to use it in display filters. So I can type, for example, firmware. I just want to firmware protocol and then here all the packets that actually contain data are selected. I'm going to add all of these fields as columns here. So right click, apply as column, like this, this one and so on. As you can see Control Shift I, that's a shortcut so that's what I'm going to use, Control Shift I Control shift i Control shift i okay, So now, a lot of data apparently here in that last field, field 5. So let me resize that column like this. And now we here have the 5 fields as some of the packets don't have uh, more than two fields. Some of them have more, some of them have less. But we can already see some patterns. For example, field one here, 10, 10, and, and this is by data. So these are, this is not an integer. By default, 
Everything is by data, uh, dissected by this dissector. So this is hexadecimal 10, 11, 12. 10, 11, 12, as we see here. Then here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and repeating. Here we have data. So this is probably the firmware being uploaded. We only have data when we have here number 11, hexadecimal 11, and not with 10 and 12. So this very first field might be the, the, the function that the, the packet fulfills. So this 11 here, hexadecimal, is probably a packet to upload data, function 11. Then here, 10 and 12, not a lot of data, just a, a, an extra field, but no data. So this might be the start of the upload, the upload itself, and then the end of the upload. And to signal to the device, device, be ready for an upload. Here is the upload. Now the upload is finished. So that might be a function. Here, that field here, it's alternating between 0, 0 and 0, 1. So this field looks like it indicates the direction. So if it is coming from the laptop and going to the IoT device, it's 0. And if it is coming from the IT, IoT device and going to the laptop, it, it is 1. We can verify this with a filter. For example, I can say firmware field 2 equals 0. And then indeed I can see that the destination is always the IoT device, uh, dot 2. Now I can see this because yeah, I don't have a lot of data. If this would scroll off the screen, have a lot of data, then I can just extend my filter and say display filter IP destination different from 127 zero, zero, two. Okay, and here you see I have no packet selected at all. So this confirms an hypothesis. Eh? If that field is equal to zero, then it is data going to the IoT device. And let's try the other way around. One and here also one and here two. We, we don't have any data. So indeed, everything that has that field value one is going to the laptop. Okay. Here we have something that only appears with 11. And this could be a counter 0, 1, 2, 3. You see, this is incrementing while this fields remain zero. Let's take a look at all the data. Okay, yeah, here zero 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 one one. So yeah, this could be some kind of counter and yeah, to count the, the packets with the upload data that is sent. Now let's select field five here with the data. I'm going to select this. And so here we have the hexadecimal dump, the ASCII dump of the selected data. And what I see here at position three, eh, one, two, three into that field, I see PK. PK is something that you will encounter with zip files. So here PK, that's hexadecimal 54B, and I see three and four. 54B34, that is the magic sequence of a PK zip header for a file entry. And indeed, if you look a bit lower, uh, farther here, you see firmware.bin. That looks like a file name. So this could well be a zip file, but it is preceded by some data, eh? 5001. Let's look at the other one. And here you can also see this one, 5001, 50001, 5001. While the last one is different, AE00. So the, oh, let me look at this one. Mm, yeah, I don't recognize anything here. Neither do I recognize anything here. And this last one. Yeah, here again, you have two PKs. 
piqué here, piqué here. So that's 54, B0102. That is the magic header of a PK zip record for a DIR entry. And indeed you can see again the file name for firmware.bin. And here 54B56, that is the magic header for a zip, PK zip record for uh, the, the closure of the directory, so the end of the zip file. So it looks like the, the firmware update is drawn through a, a zip file. But we have two bytes that precede this zip file. So I'm just going to do a test, assume that this is just an other field, not that it is not part of the data, but that it that these are other fields. So I'm going to edit the protocol preferences and add two fields, one, one each of length one, like this. Then, as you can see, field five now is 50, 50, 50 AE. I need to add field six as a column. Sorry, I did sort on this. That's not what I wanted to do. Let me sort this again like this. And then field seven. Okay, again, resizing the column. Like this. And now when I select this, indeed, I, I have the start of something I'm assuming is a, a zip file. Like this. And the fields here that I added, there is again some pattern to it. Field 6, 1110, field 5, 50, 50, 50 AE in hexadecimal. Now, if you see these fields and you look at the length of the TCP data, you see we have length 342, 342, 342, 180. That's in a decimal. So 342 and 180. So the, the three first packets of what looks to be the firmware update, upload, they have the same length. And these fields are also the same. While here we have a different length and then this field, these fields are different. So it's something that uh, is common in uh, network protocols is that you have fields that indicate the length of the data that follows. So this might be these two fields used for the length. It, it has to be at least two bytes because 342 that is greater than uh, 255. So you need at least two bytes to encode that value. So that's what could be going on here. And so let's replace these two fields, protocol preferences, by a single field of byte length 2. Like this. And then I have a superfluous field, field 7, that I'm going to remove. I mean the column, I'm removing the column. And so now we have this here. Now if you would interpret this as an integer, 5001 in hexadecimal, that is way larger. Uh, I don't know what the exact value is, but uh, I know this is way larger than 342. So, the thing that is also done in network protocols and um, other binary formats is when you have to represent integers with more than one byte, is that the byte order becomes important. So you can have your in integer encoded where the most significant bytes of that integer come first, and that is big endian, and that's what we have here, maybe. And the other one is where the least significant bytes, they come uh, first, and that is called little endian. And that is also something you can configure with my dissector. Say, if you have a field, you can say it's an integer that is little endian or big endian. Now, unfortunately, the type of the field has to be uh, defined before 
the protocol is actually defined as the dissector is actually defined so that means that it's not something you can change via protocol preferences eh? because of uh, how Lua scripts are designed for to function in Wireshark you cannot um, specify this via protocol preference because a protocol preference can only be loaded when the dissector is defined and eh, registered when the dissector is registered while fields and their type have to be defined before the protocol is registered so i can only do this via the command line so i'm going to close this and i'm going to start this again with a new option lua script one and what I'm going to give is field lengths. Now, once you provide field lengths, so one, 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 two, once you provide field lengths to the argument uh, of Wireshark as an option, then um, the Lua dissector will no longer take the preference into account. So it's you. Uh, it's no longer um, doable to change the preferences via uh, to change the field lengths via the preference field because the dissector will no longer take it into account because this here argument takes precedence. So exactly the same as I had in um, preference, but what I'm going to say now also is uppercase L for little endian. The case doesn't matter. You can use lowercase L for little endian or uppercase L and B is for big endian, so uppercase B or lowercase B. Here I'm going to use lowercase L, like this. And let's filter again on firmware. And now here you see the integer representation, so now it's no longer bytes, but integer, and displayed as a decimal. Little endian decimal. And here you can see, so 336, 336, 336, while here we have 342, 342, 336. If you calculate the difference between the two, 342 minus 336, that is 6. And here, 180 and 174, if you calculate the difference, that is 6, also 6. And if you count the number of bytes that come in front of field 5, you have field 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's 4 bytes, and field 5 with 2 bytes, so that is 6 bytes. So, all of the tests we did now here confirm that this field 5 is a little Indian integer that specifies the length of the data that follows. Now, once we have discovered this, that 2 bytes here make this up, we could also think that okay that this is indeed probably a counter and so we have length here data that corresponds to a zip file well, probably a zip file so that is most likely the upload of the firmware you have four packets here you have one two three sorry zero one two three so also four so this could be a counter and again we have an extra field field zero now the counter could also be a two byte long field, so 16 bits, so field, field 3 and field 4 combined, eh? little endian, then we would also have 0, 1, 2, 3. Now I can't be sure of that because I don't have enough data to be sure that field 4 is indeed also part of the counter, but I'm just going to assume it. I would need more than, than 200 and, uh, uh, 256 entries here to be sure that this is indeed part. So this would then go all over to one. Okay. But I'm just going to assume it. So let me close this and say these two here, that is also a link two and it is little endian like this. And now again, we have that field 6 that is no longer used, so I'm going to remove this column. And as you can see, that's a bit uh, an annoyance here that you have. If you change field sizes, yeah, your, your field numbers change. 
So I also have a workaround for that. And that is that you can give names to each of these individual fields. And that is also done through the command line argument. And I'm going to show this here. Field one. So I'm going to call this the function. Let me filter again for firmware. I'm going to call this the function of the packet and it tells what the purpose of the packet is, the function. Field two here, that is probably a, a, a reply, a request. So here a reply, here a request, here a reply, no, sorry, here a request, here a reply. And zero is a, a request, one is a reply. A request here, then be, make yourself ready to receive an upload. And here is the acknowledgement. Okay. I am ready for the upload. Here is the upload. Okay. I received the upload. Here is another upload. I received it and so on. Um, I'm going to call this the, the direction field. Um, I don't know exactly how you would call a field with a reply request. So maybe type of function or something like that, but I'm going to call it direction here. This is a counter. This is the length of the data and this is the data. So that's how I'm going to call it. So again, an option X, Lua script one. And now I'm going to specify field names. And so we have a function. We have a direction. We have a counter, we have a data link, and we have the data, like this. Okay, now as you can see, all of these fields here are no longer populated. That's because now the name of these fields has changed, so we need also to remove this and replace them with the correct ones. So here, firmware protocol data. Now we can see here function direction counter data length data. So let me remove this column, all of these columns. Like this, and now at each column, apply a column and control shift I, that's what I'm going to do. Data linked and data. And again, let's resize the data. like this. Okay. And now let's say firmware. And now we no longer has the field one and so on. And what we have here is a function. So function and uh, so function 11. Again, this is bytes and that's a byte value. So I need to type it in hexadecimal. And I can say and um, firmware direction equals zero. And then I have all of the packets that are uploads going to the IoT device. So here I actually have the data. Now, like I said, these are still bytes. If you want, you can also make integers out of them. And the trick here is again to specify this with this field length and just say that this is little engine or big engine. In here for a single byte, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make any sense to say this is little engine or big engine because there is no order. And if there is only one byte, there cannot be an order of, uh, of bytes. And you need at least two bytes to have an order. But nevertheless, I designed it like this. My uh, protocol dissector. If you give it an L or a P, it will be considered to be an integer. And so type little engine or type big engine also signifies that this is an integer. And if I do this, now you can see here 16 and 17 and 18. That's because now, since this is an integer, this is displayed in decimal, no longer in excess bytes because it's no longer bytes, it's an integer. And if I select my filter here, 11, this will malfunction because 
it's no longer 11. It is, uh, sorry, it's no longer uh, hexadecimal 11. As a byte, it is 11 hexadecimal as an integer. And so that's a notation on how to write that in a display filter like this. Or of course, you could also say 17. That 17 decimal, that also works. Huh? If it is in tiers, it's by default um, decimal, and you need to prefix it with 0x if it is hexadecimal. If it is bytes, it is by default uh, hexadecimal, and you don't need to prefix it with 0x. Okay, so now here we have our data, and what I want to do now is extract this and verify that this is indeed a, a zip file. I could copy this data here and then select what I want, but I prefer to do this from the command line. So now I'm going to switch to the command line, and there is also a command line version of Wireshark, and that is called T-Shark. And T-Shark actually takes the same options as Wireshark, so I just need to replace Wireshark here with T-Shark. And then the only thing that is a bit different is that the PCAP file to load becomes also an option and not an argument, so the option is R. T-Shark needs to read this capture file. And if I run this, here now you can see the list of packets and the uh, field information, just as you see it in Wireshark, uh, in the field view. And here we have that data. So, I just want that data, nothing more, not all of the other info here, just that data. First of all, I'm going to apply a filter. So display filters are given with option uppercase Y. Um, so, firmware function equals 17 and firmware direction equals 0. So, with this I have all the upload packets going to the IoT device, like this. Here I have the data. Now, I still have that superfluous information that I don't need, I just need the hexadecimal data of the data field. So, I'm going to tell T-Shark with option E, lowercase e, that I want to just see, sorry, not data, but firmware data. Now, if you run it like this, you will have an error, because you need also to specify one more thing here, that the type here of uh, what we are selecting are fields. So, like this, T fields. And now here we have the hexadecimal data that should represent a zip file. So I'm going to use my tool hex to bin to convert this to binary data, that hexadecimal data to binary data. And then indeed I can see here pk, pk, firmware, firmware.bin, so it looks indeed to be a zip file. So I'm going to pass this into my zip dump file. Sorry, my zip dump tool. And indeed, it is able to pass this as a zip file that contains a single file, a firmware.bin. I can select this one and do an ASCII hex dump. And here you see the, the firmware. Now, like I said, this is a PCAP file that I created, so this is not actual firmware, it's just random data that I generated. But it shows that this is indeed a zip file that I can extract. Now to be sure that there is no extra data at the beginning or at the end of the uh, file, the zip file, I'm going to use the parsing option of zipdump to look for PK zip records and have a listing of that. And so indeed here we have those three records and nothing comes in front of them, nothing after them, and also nothing in between them. So this is indeed a proper zip file that we were able to extract and parse here with the zip dump. Now, 
just to illustrate how this would look like if we would not have been able to properly reverse this protocol. So let's say that the that field with the length, yeah, I'm going to remove that field, also going to remove the name and yeah, data length, so that we have again two extra bytes in front of the data, and like we had a certain time here in the video in the demo. And if I run it like that, I do see indeed, so that's how it would look, a P, a prefix, there is some data in front of the records, which is unexpected. And if I try to run a zip dump, then I get errors, eh? bad zip file, bad magic number for file. So that's how it would look like if uh, I would not have been able to reverse this uh, properly, then I would get errors in parsing the zip file.